So, um, this recording um, will probably be a little bit longer than normal because this uh, aims to cover all the prior learning and knowledge you should have from your GCSE and DPEG courses so that when you come to AFP in September, everybody's at the same place and we can really sort of move you on. Um, so we're going to be covering the skeletal system, which essentially looks at bones and joints. And you can see from the specification that is all you know, prior assumed knowledge. You should know all this stuff already. There are loads of places that you can get uh, support information. So here's a couple of websites that can be uh, useful to you. Brian Max really good and Keep Cool really good also. And of course YouTube, which has loads of reference material for you to support your learning. So the question is, could you do a movement analysis of a picture or of a sports skill that you perform? Um, because all of the learning about the bones and joints isn't necessarily to just you know, relay it or copy it in a skeleton. You need to be able to apply it to certain skills. What sort of stuff do you reckon you have to include in a movement analysis? Then? So if I was looking at that picture there? Yeah. Um, if you were looking at the elbow joint in particular. Okay, so I would probably say how the elbow is bending and I'd probably mention the muscles. Yeah. And what muscle do you reckon would be making it bend? Um, depending on the movement, it would be bicep or tricep. Okay. Because obviously they're working pairs. So, um, yeah, and I'll probably mention the bones as well, the different names of the bones that are, are moving. So you're absolutely on the right lines. Um, and these are the sorts of things that you would have to be able to analyse in terms of uh, any joints. But a really important thing to point out is that the language and the terminology that we use at A-level mm -hmm. is different from GCSE speak. So talking about bending is inappropriate and you should be saying flexion, flexion at the elbow joint. Okay. Or saying biceps, that would get you zero marks on a paper because you have to say biceps brachii, which is its proper name. So unfortunately, a lot of the muscles and bones and joints, you need to use the correct terminology. Right. But you can sort of see all of these bits here. You need to know the classification of joints, what type of joint it is, what bones articulate at a joint. What does it mean by articulating bones? That's basically a really posh word for saying a joint. So where two bones meet as an articulation, it's either a joint. Same thing. So it's again, it's just terminology that we need to use. Um, and then you can also see you need to know the muscles and specifically the types of contractions that are happening at those muscles. And we'll come to that later in the course. So let's get on to the nitty gritty, really, looking at the bones and the names of the bones. Um, it's really unlikely you're going to get a, a picture of a skeleton where you have to label all the bones. Um, but why don't we just see what we know and then see what we can pick out. So can you name any of the bones? What about that one? Okay. Um, skull. Good guess. Good effort. And very much right, except for terminology. So, Ash, do you know the proper name for a skull? <laughs> I, I do. <laughs> it's, uh, it's the cranium. Cool. Brilliant. What about this one here? Um, kneecap. And the proper name is? Um, patella. Patella, correct. So again, we, we know you know your stuff, and I'm sure most of you know your names and your bones, but it's using the right terminology, um, and that really matters. And that will get you a lot of the uh, s smaller question marks. So not only do you need to know the names of the bones, but you need to know their sort of um, classifications, and we've kind of got two. One is the axial skeleton, which you can see in sort of purpley colour, or the, the blue colour, and then the brighter pinky colour, your appendicular skeleton. Now looking at that, what do you, how would you sort of observe differences between the two types? Well, the purple seems to be more central, with the pink parts coming off of that central part. Yeah, that's right. So the axial skeleton is very much your, your trunk, um, your cranium, and rib cage and sternum. Sternum's the posh word for your uh, breastbone, so you kind of your chest. Um, and, and essentially, they have a very protective role of the organs within them, and also they provide something for your limbs, so the pink bits, to hang on to and to hold on to, your appendages, posh word for limbs. <coughs> so there co here comes then all the sort of names of the bones that you need to know on your appendages, and this is where sometimes people can go astray and make mistakes. And the things you might want to think about is how am I going to remember the proper name? So you'll have all know your shoulder blades, and a simple way of remembering that is your proper name is your scapula, basically beginning with S, 
really simple things. Um, and as you go through all this knowledge, you need to find ways of remembering which is which, your own mnemonic. Okay. So what does it mean by shoulder girdle? Yeah, it's a good point. So the shoulder girdle is basically the scapula and the clavicle. And you know when you're in class and you don't know the answer and you shrug your shoulders up, the proper name for that is elevation, and it's these two bones, which are the bones which move upwards, obviously the muscles pulling them upwards, to make that shrugging upward action, that elevation. And that's different from the shoulder joint, which specifically is the humerus and the scapula, mm, the joint between the two. So yeah, good point. Again, this is another one that people forget, which one's which out of the two forearm bones, the radius and the ulna, and you might have different ways. I know some people use radius as the thumb because your thumb can look like an R. Um, I like ulna underneath is one underneath, it's the smaller bone. So again, you have to find your own ways of remembering which is which. Um, scooting down those. Uh, tarsals and carpals are often ones which again are confused. And the simplest way that works for me is remembering your tarsals are down by your toes. They're not actually your toes, but they're down by your toes, your tarsals, toes. You find your own way. So, over to you. Can you guys think of any functions of the skeleton? Um, protection. Yes. You've got your sternum, isn't it? Your breastplate that protects your, your heart. Yeah, really important. Movement. Yes. It allows you to move. Yep, absolutely. Obviously, a lot of our sports movement requires us to do that. Um, Structure, shape, because if we didn't have it, then we would just be a bit of a flubby <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, so I reckon those are three really important ones. There's one or two more, so let's quickly go through them. First one, uh, movement. So as we said, our, our long bones in particular um, work at joints, at articulations. And when muscles are attached and worked over a joint, they create movement. Um, so they're really important. You said structure and shape. And yeah, obviously, we would be just a, a pool of blobby, blobby stuff. <laughs> so we've got bones, this framework to suspend organs in. So the axial skeleton is very important for, for sort of supporting internal organs like lungs and heart. Mm. And uh, yeah, obviously, our appendages help us create different structural shapes. This one you didn't mention, um, so it actually stores really important minerals for us and importantly calcium and you probably made the association with drinking milk as a young child and getting strong healthy bones um, and that's really important. Can you, while we're here, can you think of any um, in, uh, diseases or conditions that you can get later in life which are to do with bone strength? Hmm. Um, osteoporosis, is that yep, one? Absolutely. And it's really important that when you're young, you do lots of physical activity so that you can get what we call a high peak bone density or peak bone mass. And that basically means your bones are really strong because for fact, as you get older, they get more fragile. Um, so the stronger you can develop them at when you're young, the better. So there you go. Um, what about this one? Blood cell production. <laughs> what do you mean, like diseases or something? Well, although obviously you, you've probably heard of red blood cells and they travel around as part of uh, one component of your blood, mm. but the red blood cells are actually produced in red bone marrow, mm. which you have in your long bones, so the big bones like your femur. Um, so red blood cells are produced there, and also white blood cells are produced in the yellow bone marrow, which you can also get in these big long bones. So it's really, really important for us. They have that function. Okay. There you go. And then you said this one. You gave the example of the sternum, which is great. The ribs obviously contribute to the, your example. Mm -hmm. um, the vertebrae protect the what? Sternocleum. Yep. And the cranium protects your huge big brain. brain. <laughs> brain. <laughs> yeah. Um, and lastly, yeah, this one's again we've mentioned. You know, one of the things that the skeleton does is movement so we obviously need muscles to attach to bones in order to make movements over joints and we also talked earlier about the scapula and the shoulder um, girdle and the scapula is actually sort of freestanding in your body and it's there's an awful lot of musculature that attaches so that's this image up here so there's a lot of muscles that attach to that big flat bone um, that create movements like elevation etc 
Okay, so we'll really quickly do this. Um, you essentially need to research this process of how bones become when you're born or and sort of early age they are cartilage, softer. And as you age, this process of ossification occurs where osteoblasts lay down bone cells and the, the cartilage becomes hardened into the, what you would understand as bone. Um, <coughs> and specifically, that those osteoblasts lay down bone cells at the growth plates, or proper name, epiphyseal plates. You need to understand this because later when we look at conditions of the bone, you can have problems with growth plates. And as we said earlier, peak bone density is really important, so we need to make this as strong as possible when we're young. Okay. And there we go. Um, similarly, you're really unlikely to have to label a long bone, but you do need to understand the anatomy of the long bone um, and these key terms because they relate to, as I said, the condition. So the, again, the epiphyseal plate is this line up here. Yeah. Um, that's where your osteoblasts basically make you grow. Your bones get longer. I've heard about articulatitis <coughs> before. And that's yeah, we look at that in just a mo when we look at a typical synovial joint. Okay. Um, you have to learn a lot about structure and function when you're looking at anatomy. Um, so if our bones were solid to be strong, they'd be really heavy and we wouldn't get very far. Mm -hmm. So we've got this special spongy bone or cancellous bone is its proper name, which is like honeycomb, but re really light, but really, really strong. Mm. Um, compact bone, a little bit different sort of lines, the length of the bone, it's r very strong also. And we've mentioned already bone marrow. You know, I've got arrows to go in there to show you where these bits and bobs. So you just need to know the anatomy there. Okay. Right, again, over to you two. Um, can you guys give me some examples of where you might find these types of bones? I've given you the names of the five different types of bones. Right. Where would you find them? Long bone's got to be a thin one. Yes. Yeah. Is the longest, biggest bone. Yeah. And typically, what do long bones do? What's the function of them? Movement. Yeah. So they're leverage and movement. Cool. Short bones, what do you reckon? Um, short bones, yeah. Fingers. Good effort. However, phalanges, which are your fingers or your toes, although they look relatively short compared to your femur, they're actually long bones and they are all about movement. So, could you say that? Uh, other ones are short bones, what do you reckon? Ooh, um, patella? Is not a short bone, that's a sesamoid bone. And that one's down there, we'll, we'll see oh it in a minute. But basically, oh. that, that inserts where it, the tendon goes over a joint. It's a really protective protective type of bone. Oh, short bone's got to be something with carpals. Carpals, tarsals, metatarsals, all those to be annoying. Uh, flat bones. Uh, scapula. Is a sh flat bone. Cranium, <laughs> pelvis, or the ilium and ischium. All flat bones and really about protection and muscle attachment. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, the vertebrae, which are your irregular bones, which are very specific to your jaw. Okay. Cool. Okay, classifications of joints. There are three classifications. What do you reckon they are? Ball and socket. No, that's oh. a type oh. of one of the classifications. A common mistake, though. Synovial. Synovial is a good answer. So you might have learnt freely movable, and the proper name is synovial. That's okay. one. Fixed. Fixed is another. The proper name is fibrous. Same thing. Fixed or fibrous. Um, slightly. Slightly movable. movable is the kind of middle one, which allows a little bit of movement. The proper name is cartilaginous. So that's all right there. Okay, guys. So we're going to stop there. Um, that essentially covers the bones and introduces joints to you. And we will explore joints a little bit more in the next recording.